In this lesson, we're going to tackle a couple of problems on surface area of pyramids. So remember, a pyramid has just one base, and a regular pyramid has a base which has all the sides that are congruent and all the angles that are congruent. So here we have a square pyramid, and we know from what they give to us that the uh, height of the pyramid, or I'm sorry, the lateral edge of the uh, square pyramid is 3. So here's my lateral edge is 3. And the height of the pyramid is going to be 1. So I'm going to draw the height of the pyramid, which is basically here my altitude is going to be 1. And they ask, what is the measure of a diagonal of the base of the pyramid? So let's tackle A first. What is the measure of the diagonal? So the diagonal in this case is going to be that line that runs from one corner of the base all the way to the other corner. Well, I can find out the diagonal uh, by finding out what this length is here using the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that, let's just call this x, that x squared plus 1 squared is going to equal 3 squared. Or x squared is going to equal 8, so 3 squared minus 1 squared. Or x is going to equal 2 root 2. Well, if I know that half the length of the diagonal is 2 root 2, I know the entire length of the diagonal is going to be 4 root 2. So that's your answer for A. In B, they ask us to find the slant height of the pyramid. So the slant height is going to be that value, or that uh, value where we have a segment that runs from the vertex of the pyramid down to the base, and also bisects the base. Well, we can figure that out because we know that if we have a square pyramid, uh, and the diagonal of the square pyramid is 4 root 2, then we know, and this angle here is 90 degrees, we know that these two angles here are going to be 45 degrees. So a diagonal of 4 root 2 tells us the side lengths are going to be 4 and also 4, which tells us that this length here is going to be half of that value, or 2. So now again, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what b is, or the pyramid slant height, because I know that 1 squared, or the height, the altitude, plus 2 squared, or the base of this triangle that we've created, is equal to the hypotenuse, which is the slant height. So I have 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 squared, 5. And that equals the question mark squared. So our question mark, uh, the length of our uh, slant height, is going to be the square root of 5. Now let's tackle C. And C is a pretty straightforward problem or question. They want us to find the area of the base. Well. We know that one side length of the square is 4, so we know that the area of our square is just going to be 16 units squared. Then finally, they want us to find the pyramid's lateral area. And that's just the sum of each of the triangles, and we have four of them, in the square pyramid. So all we need to do is figure out now the area of one of the triangles and multiply it by 4. Well, we know that the base of the triangle is going to be 4. And we know the height of the triangle is equal to the slant height, which is root 5. So we know that the area of one of the triangles is 1 half of 4 times root 5. And we said that we were going to multiply that value by 4 because we had four different triangles. So I end up with 2 root 5 times 4 which is equal to 8 root 5. So our answer to D is 8 root 5. In the next question, number 11, the book gives us a regular tetrahedron. And what a tetrahedron is, is a four-faced pyramid that has four equilateral triangle, triangular faces. They tell us that the edge length of uh, the tetrahedron is going to be 6 and they ask us to find its total surface area and its height. Well, the total surface area is pretty straightforward. So we have each 
uh, of the uh, edges is 6. So I draw in 6, 6 here, 6, 6, 6, and 6. So we have four different uh, bases or faces. And we can figure those out pretty quickly because we know that since we have an equilateral equiangular triangle, that all of these angles here are going to equal 60 degrees. So I draw my altitude on one of the faces of the triangle, and which is also my slant height uh, for the tetrahedron, but an altitude for the triangle itself. And then I figure out that this half of this length of the base is going to be 3. And because this side is opposite the 60 degree angle, that the slant height or the altitude of the triangle is going to be 3 root 3. So I can calculate A by taking 4 times 1 half, because I have 4 faces, 1 half. I'm figuring out the area of the, each triangular face. 6, which is the base, times 3 root 3. And that is equal to 12 times 3 root 3, or 36 times 3, I'm sorry, 36 root 3. So our answer to A is 36 root 3. Now the next problem is a little bit more complicated. And it's probably best if we draw a picture of the tetrahedron looking straight down on the tetrahedron. So we're looking at the base of the tetrahedron. We're asked to find its height. So essentially what we want is we want the distance, again, from the vertex of one of the vertices all the way down to the base. So we need to find that point first that's right, let's say, in the center of uh, the base of the tetrahedron. So if we were to draw a picture of the base of the tetrahedron, look directly down on top of it, it would look something like this. And what we're really after is we're after this length here. We want this length because then we can find, we already have one of the edges of six that kind of comes out from this and goes directly up to the vertex of the tetrahedron. And so with those two values, we can find what the, uh, the height is of the tetrahedron. So we know that we have a 60, 60, 60, an equiangular triangle. And when we create our length here, and we draw our right angle, we know that in the creation of this triangle, we've split this angle into two pieces. This used to be 60 degrees, now it's 30 degrees. I know also that the length of one of the sides is going to be 6. And I've, since I've cut in half, this is 3. And then the side opposite, since the side opposite the 60 degree angle is 3, I know that uh, this length here is going to be twice this length here. So I know that the length opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be uh, 3 over root 3, or root 3 times 3 over 3, or just root 3. So I know that this length, so I've just identified root 3 as this length here, opposite the 30 degree angle. I know that this length here, which is opposite the 90 degree angle, the hypotenuse, is going to be equal to 2 times that, or 2 root 3. Now I can go back to my uh, tetrahedron, and understanding that this length here is 2 root 3, and my edge is 6, as defined by the problem, I can calculate that the other leg of this right triangle that I've created, which is the height, is going to be 4 root 6. So I have the altitude squared, or the height squared, plus this length here squared, 2 root 3 squared, is equal to this hypotenuse or the edge squared, which is 36. So I have my altitude or my height squared plus 2 root 3 squared, which is going to be 12, is equal to 36. So my altitude squared is equal to 24. My altitude is going to be equal to, should be 2 root 6.
So let's just correct that because I had a miswriting in here. So my altitude is going to equal to root 6. Now in the final problem, I have, this is actually number 12, a regular octahedron. So now I have eight faces, is a solid with eight faces, each of which is an equilateral triangle. So similar to the tetrahedron, I have eight faces uh, that are all the same. If each edge of the regular octahedron uh, is six meters long, what is the solid's total surface area? Okay, so again, all we're left with is six similar triangles, or six identical triangles. I have my uh, edge at six, six and six. So again, I can calculate by drawing my slant height or my altitude for the triangle. This value is 60 degrees. I know that this is three. Side opposite the 60 degree angle is root three times the side opposite the 30 degree angle. I have three root three as my slant height. So I can figure out the area of one of these triangles, and I have eight of them, by taking one half of six times three root three. And that is equal to nine root three. Now I have to multiply that by eight because I have eight different faces in my octahedron. And I'm left with 72 root three as my answer for A. In the next question, they ask us to find the distance from C to E. So the distance from C to E is just this distance here across the octahedron. Now I know that the intersection of this of C, D, E, and F is going to be a square. Uh, I know that all these lengths are the same. So I've created, I have a right triangle here, and I have two side lengths that are the same. I have a right angle here and a right triangle defined by C, E, D. So I know that my length of C, D is already 6, and my length of D, E is already 6. So I'm left with my hypotenuse, which is going to be 6 root 2. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit, and we'll start on the next problem. Okay, I've cleaned this up a little bit, and now we're asked to find the distance from A to B. So let's draw that line from A to B, A right down the center of the octahedron. Well, I know that the length from C to E is going to be 6 root 2, so I know that half of that length is going to be 3 root 2, and I already have my lateral edge of 6, which becomes the hypotenuse in this particular problem. So I'm going to erase this. So I know that if this is 3 root 2 and this is 6, I can find that the distance, at least half the distance from A to the intersection, let's say, of CE and AB is also going to be 3 root 2. So 3 root 2 squared plus 3 root 2 squared is equal to 6 squared, which is our hypotenuse. So I know that if A, we'll call this G, is uh, going to be 3 root 2, then G to B is also 3 root 2. So I'm left with my answer of AB as being the distance as being 6 root 2 millimeters. In the final question, they ask us to identify the shape of the quadrilateral A, C, B, and E. And if I think about this, I realize that these angles here are all going to be right angles. I have 6, 6, 6 again, and then 6 again. So I'm either left with some type of rhombus or a square. But I've identified these angles as right angles because I have 6 here, 6 here, I'm sorry, these is 45 degree angles, because I have 6, 6, and then also my length from A to B as 6 root 2. So because this is 6 root 2, I know that these angles here, C, B, G, and C, A, G, are going to equal 45. And if they're 45 degrees, then I have myself a square.